everybody, uh, and welcome to the Azure Cosmos TV uh, Global User Group for October 2023. I'm your host, Jay Gordon, and I am a Program Manager with the Azure Cosmos team. And today we're diving deep into the future of search, search technologies, specifically focusing on vector similarity search with Azure AI Vision and Azure Cosmos TV for Postgres SQL. Now, this isn't your everyday keyword-based search. Vector Search offers a richer and more sophisticated querying experience. Now, I am thrilled to introduce our guest for today. It's uh, Latini uh, Savidu. Uh, please excuse me. Uh, I am have terrible American Brooklyn English, and I'm going to do my best to say everybody's name correctly and say every other place correctly. So please bear with me. Uh, so uh, Patini is not just a final year electrical and computer engineering student at Aristotle University at Ialoniki uh, in Greece, but she's also an enthusiast of IoT, AI, cloud technologies, even biomedical engineering. And she's so passionate to technology and has earned her title of Microsoft MVP in AI. Uh, excuse me for leaving my uh, email up. That was my fault. Uh, moreover, uh, she plays an active role in the Microsoft Student Learn Ambassadors community. At really, really amazing community that we work with. Uh, she's got a great blog uh, and I, I'm just really, really glad to have her with us today. And we're going to talk a little bit uh, about using uh, the vector search capabilities uh, with PG Vector. Uh, but before we do that, we've got some housekeeping that we always do when we run these uh, sessions. And to help me with this housekeeping, I have my friend from Microsoft Reactor, uh, Askia. Hi, Askia. How are you today? I'm good, Jay. Good to see you again. Good, good to see, see you. Again. Yeah. So, I know oh. we've got our code of conduct, and I want you to be able to tell everybody about it. So feel free. Yeah. You know, the key is just to be respectful. Uh, we want to create an environment that is respectful for both our audience and presenters. Uh, so just make sure uh, when we, uh, you know, definitely want to excuse me, encourage, encourage engagement in the chat, but just be mindful, respectful of others, um, you know, other people's opinions, other people's differences. Um, we'll definitely be sharing useful links throughout the chat. Uh, so definitely uh, would like your participation. Uh, this session is going to be recorded. So for some reason, if you have to leave early, uh, it will be available within 24 to 48 hours on the Microsoft uh, Reactor YouTube channel and sounds like on the developer, Microsoft developer channel as well. Um, this session will take about an hour um, and we'll have time for questions throughout. So make sure uh, you put those in the chat um, and once again, just be respectful and we'll turn it back over to you, Jay. Thanks so much. I will see you at the end of the show. Always appreciate you helping me out. So to help me out today, uh, I have my guest, uh, and it is uh, Fatini, and uh, here we are. Thank you so much, and please, please, I beg of you, forgive me for any mispronunciations. I'm trying my best here. Hi, Jay, and uh, hi, everyone. So we have a spectacular conversation we're going to be having today. I'm going to give you all the space in the world to talk to our audience all about using uh, PG Vector, uh, specifically using vector search within Postgres and talking about how you're going to use AI vision. Uh, but before we get to that, and I always love this part of doing these sessions, is I like kind of keying in on the things that you do, that you work with, that you basically got you here today. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've been doing, what you're going to be doing, and what you're working on. Yeah, sure. Uh, so now uh, I'm a student, I'm a final year, and I hope that I graduate next month. And my journey started almost uh, three and a half years ago and when I joined the Microsoft Student Community. And I immediately started learning uh, all the things about Azure technologies. 
And I became more and more involved in the student community. I started speaking at events, uh, sharing guides in my blog. And uh, I found out that I really liked um, the world of cloud technologies and I want to just to work more in this field. Well, you know, speaking of cloud technologies, I think that's one of the things we, you're going to be presenting to us today. And I'm really looking forward to seeing your presentation. And I know you've got a demo waiting for us. Uh, but that being said, this is an interactive user group. We want your questions. So um, you'll see we have our comment section. Please leave your questions there. Uh, we would love to hear them. So just put them in the chat and we will address them as soon as we can. So um, we've got about 50 minutes or so. So uh, I'd love you to come ahead and just start rolling into it. I've got your presentation up. Uh, why don't you go for it? All right. Yes, perfect. Uh, so as they said, we're going to talk about uh, vector similarity search using Azure AI Vision and Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres. Uh, so uh, I have already talked about me and they did a very warm uh, introduction for me. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can use uh, the links that are shown in this slide. And you can find my website at s14e.github.io. Uh, so before delving in into what vector embeddings and vector similarity sets is, uh, I want to understand the problem that we are trying to solve. First, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, firstly, uh, have you ever looked for something like a movie, uh, but you but could not remember its name, or you can find the right keywords to search for it? Or maybe you are trying to find uh, a product and you know, uh, you have a basic idea of what the product looks like. Uh, for example, uh, you know uh, how a pair of shoes looks like, or you have the actual image, uh, but you don't know how to search for it. And unlike traditional search systems, which rely on mentions of keywords, tags, or other metadata, uh, semant uh, lexical similarity, and the number of word occurrences, uh, vector search systems uh, <clears throat> leverages machine learning to capture the meaning of the data, allowing you to search by what you mean. And vector search work with different types of unstructured data, including text, images, videos, and audio. And for example, if we return to the second question, using a vector search system, if you want to find a product that is looks like a, a product uh, that uh, in, uh, in a vector search system, if you want to find a product that is similar to a product uh, that you have, you can use the actual image of the product to search for similar uh, for similar products instead of trying to find the right keywords to search uh, for your product. And this is much easier than traditional vector search. And uh, vector search relies on the conversion of images and text and audio and videos and other type of data into a an numeric representation, which is called vector embedding. And it uses algorithms like nearest neighbors to find uh, objects that are similar uh, to your desired object. And this is what we are going to explore today. Uh, we will start by exploring the concept of vector embeddings and understand how we can generate vector embeddings using machine learning models. And then we will understand how a vector search system works. And we will build the basic vector search system using uh, the Azure AI Vision embeddings model and the Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres for storing uh, our data. Okay, I think we can start with the main presentation. And so what are vector embeddings? 
as I said, vector set is based on the conversion of unstructured data into a numerical representation, which is called a vector embedding. And you can think of vector embeddings as an array of numerical files. Uh, this array is high dimensional and dense, and each, and each dimension of a vector contains information about the original content. So by converting uh, data into vectors, we can capture the meaning of the data and the semantic similarity between two objects. For example, uh, the, the words cat and kitten are semantically similar, and so we expect that the vector will be numerically close. Or alternatively, if we place these vectors in the same vector space, we will see that the vectors of cat and kitten will be close to one another, while the vector of puppy uh, will be far apart of these vectors. And so we can quantify the semantic similarity by the proximity in the vector space. And to measure the semantic similarity, we can use a distance metric, such as Euclidean distance, a inner product, or cosine similarity. Uh, today, I'm going to use cosine similarity and cosine distance. And cosine similarity is defined as the angle between two vectors, uh, which is equal to the dot product of the vectors, uh, which is equal to the dot product of the vectors uh, divided by the product of the magnitudes. And cosine distance is equal to 1 minus cosine similarity. And the reason why I use uh, this metric is because Azure AI Vision uses this metric uh, to compute cosine similarity. Now, in the vector cell system, uh, the vector appending of the user's query is compared with a set uh, of pre store appendings to find uh, the vectors. Uh, that are more similar uh, to the query vector. Uh, so in this example, uh, we first compute the vector appending of the word dog and we place uh, this vector in the same vector space. And then uh, we run uh, the remaining concept by similarity to the query vector. And it's uh, very important to, uh, in order to compare the vectors uh, with the query vector, uh, we must use the same embedding model to generate all these vectors. And with that being said, uh, let's try to understand how we can generate vector embeddings for our data. Is it as simple as, generate, as converting our data into numerical representation? And the answer is no, because uh, we want to ensure that the original meaning of the data is preserved. For example, if we want to compare two sentences, uh, we don't want to check whether the two sentences contain all the same words, but we want to check if the meaning of the two sentences is the same. So we need an embedding model that is capable of converting unstructured text into a numerical representation which, which captures uh, the original meaning of the data. Uh, most embedded models are based on uh, machine learning models and uh, specifically neural networks. Uh, for example, OpenAI, which is very popular uh, in the last months, offers some embedded models which are capable of generating ve vector embeddings uh, for pieces of text. Today, I will use the embedded model of Azure AI Vision for vectorizing images and text. So Azure AI Vision is powered by Project Florence, which is a state-of-the-art uh, computer vision model developed by Microsoft Research. Uh, Florence is a large foundation model, which is based on Transformers, and is capable of handling both language and vision-based tasks. It constrains on a billion of text space and videos, and can be adapted to a variety of computer vision tasks, such as classification, object detection, frame locator in videos, 
image captioning and image retrieval, which is uh, the functionality of Azure Ray Vision that we are going to explore uh, today. Before going into details about image retrieval, let's go to the Vision Studio, which is a UI interface for Azure AI Vision uh, to explore the Azure AI, uh, the image retrieval uh, functionality. Uh, with the image retrieval, you can search over a collection of images using natural language text prompts. Uh, to run uh, image retrieval in Vision Studio, you need a Cognitive Service resource in this US region. Uh, but if you want to use uh, the SDKs, uh, you can create a Cognitive Service resource in any of the available regions. We we'll start by selecting a uh, photo collection. And then uh, we can send some text prompts to search for images. Uh, for example, I can search for images showing sunset in the mountains. And here we can see the results, which are pretty accurate. We see sunset and mountains. Uh, we can also search for uh, sunset on the beach. Mm -hmm. And again, we see that the model it retains the correct results. And you can also search using your own uh, search query. Uh, for example, I have seen that the image collection uh, includes uh, some photographs of elephants. So I will search for an elephant. And as you see, the AI vision retains images of elephants. And there are some images that does not contain elephants, but uh, this is okay because uh, the photo collection uh, is limited and um, uh, doesn't include so many uh, photographs of elephants. So let's go back to the presentation and see. Let's try to understand how the image uh, retrieval flow in Azure AI Vision works. First, uh, we use the Vectorized Image API to convert the, the images in our collection into vector embeddings. And when a query is issued by an application, we use uh, the same embedding model to, uh, to compute uh, the vector of our query. And if the query is a text prompt, we can use uh, the vectorized text API. Uh, or if it is an image, uh, we can use the vectorized image API. Then we use uh, the query vector and the vectors uh, of the images in our collection. And we compute the cosine similarity between any two vectors. And then we can sort the results and select uh, the, the vectors with the highest cosine similarity. And we can access the images that are associated with these vectors. OK. Uh, Let's jump into the second demo, which is a Jupyter Notebook, uh, in which we will try to build uh, this flow uh, using Python. Uh, I will use some images from the paintings dataset of uh, Visual Geometry Group at the University of Oxford. Uh, first, you have to import uh, the necessary libraries and some functions that I have created to make a post request to the Vector Image API and to the Vectorized Text API of Azure AI Vision. Okay, I. <clears throat> it's slow for some reason, but so we can see the result. Ah, okay, uh, then we log the environment variables for uh, Azure AI Vision re uh, resource. And now we can start exploring our data set. Uh, I will open the first image, uh, which is a painting of a dog. And we use the image embedding function uh, to send a post request to the vectorized image API and uh, compute uh, the vector embedding of this image. Uh, next, uh, let's try to, to form some text prompts and compute the cosine similarity between the vector of the image and the vector of our query. 
as you see, this is an image of a dog. Uh, so uh, as a first uh, text prompt, I use uh, the text prompt and dog. And as you expect, the cosine similarity uh, is very high, is uh, 36%, which is very good. Uh, but uh, we can uh, find a better cosine similarity score. Uh, then the type of this uh, of this painting is a terrier dog. So we can run uh, the, the next uh, code block and we'll see that the cosine similarity is almost uh, 41%. And if we be more specific and use a dense from like a painting of a terrier dog, we we'll see that the cosine similarity is 1% higher uh, than the previous cosine similarity. And as a last step, I will use a text from of a totally different thing. For example, a car this is definitely not a, a painting of a car. And we will see that the cosine similarity is much lower. It's almost uh 19.5 percent uh so uh this painting uh, does not show a car we can also uh, compare uh, two images uh, so i will open two more images from our data set the first Uh, is an image of one of the dog, and the second is a painting of fables on a table. And uh, now we will compute the cosine similarity of the vectors between any two images. And here I want to, I want everyone to take a moment and think about um, uh, what do you expect? Uh, which uh, cosine similarity score will be high? Mm -hmm. Uh, will the cosine similarity between uh, image 1 and image 3 be higher uh, than the cosine similarity score between image 1 and image 2? Uh, as, we, as we said, uh, cosine similarity uh, is a metric of the semantic similarity between uh, two objects. And we see that image 1 and image 2 are paintings of dogs, so we expect that the cosine similarity score will be higher than the cosine similarity score between any other pair. And we can also compute the cosine similarity scores. And we see that the cosine similarity between uh, the paintings of dogs is uh, 75%, while the other two cosine similarity scores are almost uh, 40%, which is a much lower value. Now, in the next part of the notebook, uh, we will generate a vector appendix for a collection of 85 images uh, from our data set. And we will then send some text queries and use uh, images as a reference image uh, to search for similar paintings in our um, okay, I think it's not a good idea to run the notebook live, so <laughs> I will not run the next save. Okay, let's move on and I will come back to so you just uh, a display of some of the paintings that are included in the data set. Uh, okay, uh, it ran. Uh, so here we see that the data set contains paintings of animals, uh, of fruits, of vegetables, uh, landscapes, and some portraits of, of people. Uh, now we can generate appendix uh, for all the images in the data set, and we store these appendix in a JSON file. And now we can load these embeddings uh, to use them in the next exam. Uh, I want to mention that uh, you can find uh, all the scripts and the notebooks that I'm showing today in, the, in my GitHub uh, repository. And uh, 
if you don't see uh, the link in the description of the video, uh, you will see at the end of the presentation here, so you will have the time to explore uh, the concept on your own. Uh, so the first uh, scenario is image to image scenario or reverse image search. We will use uh, an image as a reference to search for similar paintings. Uh, here, the search by image function first computes the vector embedding of our reference image and then uh, computes the cosine similarity between the reference vector and the vectors uh, of the images in our collection, sorts the results and selects uh, the vectors and the images uh, with the highest similarity score. Uh, we see that this is an image of a brown horse and the paintings that are retained by the faction uh, show brown horses and a white horse and another white animal, uh, but generally the results are pretty accurate. Uh, in the next example, we will use uh, this image as a reference, which is a boat. And now we see uh, that the results that are written by the faction are not semantically similar as in the first case, but we can still see some similarities in the colors of the paintings and in the basic shapes uh, that uh, we see in these paintings. You can also search using uh, another image for some a painting of flowers and you can get uh, pretty accurate results. Uh, we see uh, paintings of flowers. And in the last example, uh, I used this image as a reference, which is a pink table uh, with vases, flowers and some books on it. And uh, we get uh, as a result, uh, paintings that depict tables with flowers and vases and books and chairs, uh, so the results uh, are good. And also, uh, this painting is from the same artist uh, as uh, the reference painting. Now, uh, let's see a, a text to image search scenario, which is uh, the scenario that we saw in the, uh, in the Vision Studio. Uh, now we search uh, based on text query. For example, let's try to find paintings uh, of a table with flowers. And the search by text function works in the same way as the search by image function. Uh, the only difference is that in order to convert our uh, search term into a vector, we use the vectorized text API instead of the vectorized image API. And we see again that uh, the function retains uh, paintings of a table with flowers, so there is a accurate. And you can also search for paintings uh, shown apples. And you can get paintings of apples with different colors and shapes. And um, you will see here that it's a painting of apples and mushrooms. And the similarity score is 30.6%. Uh, and uh, if you try uh, you can try to improve the similarity score by improving uh, the search term. For example, if I use as a search term mushrooms and apples, you will see that the, the similarity score is 43.5% uh, and is uh, almost 13% uh, higher than in the previous example. Uh, my data set also includes some uh, paintings, uh, six in total on this and Van Gogh. And um, you can use uh, the name of the artist, uh, for example, Vincent Van Gogh, uh, to try to search for paintings on this, uh, of this artist. In my case, Vincent Van Gogh is famous, so I, I am able uh, to find all the paintings uh, of this artist. And there are some paintings that are not from Vincent van Gogh, but uh, they have lower similarity scores. This is a portrait of Vincent van Gogh. So if you change a bit uh, the set, then uh, you can 
find uh, the portrait uh, with high cosine similarity. And you can also get some other portraits uh, from different artists and the similarity scores are better than in the first case. Okay, I have some other examples. For example, uh, this is the type of a, of a painting in my data set. And using this function, I'm able to find uh, this painting with high uh, cosine similarity score. And you, uh, you can also uh, detect activities uh, in, the, in the images. For example, find paintings that show people playing chess. And you will see that you are able to find paintings of people playing chess. Uh, that's it. Uh, so back here, uh, back in our presentation, we are going to talk a bit about vector databases. In the demo that I showed you, the vector embeddings are stored in the Pandas data frame. Uh, but this is not an effective way uh, to store a large amount of data. And this is why uh, we use vector databases. And vector database is a specialized type of database which is optimized for storing and querying vectors with large number of dimensions. So in our example, we can store uh, the, the vectors of our images in a vector database and then send queries uh, to this database in order to retrieve uh, the results. Azure offers different types of vector databases, and most of the databases, most of the vector databases are built on the top of traditional databases with specialized uh, extensions. And today we're going to explore the vector similarity search capabilities of Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres. And let's start it. Uh, in, uh, in Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres and generally in Postgres as well uh, databases, vector similarity search is enabled by the PG vector extension. And before storing any vectors in your database, uh, you should uh, install the PG vector extension using uh, the select create extension vector command. And then uh, when created a table, you can use the type vector uh, to, create, uh, to create a column in the table to store uh, vector embeddings. Uh, so this command, I uh, create a table named uh, image vectors uh, with two columns. Uh, the file name column of type text uh, includes uh, the, the name of the image file while the embedding column of uh, type vector uh, contains the vector embedding uh, of the image file, which is generated uh, by Azure AI Vision. And I want to mention that in next to the type vector and in parentheses, you can specify the number of dimensions of your vector embeddings, which is different uh, depending on the embedding model uh, that you will use to generate uh, your vectors. Uh, hmm. This is the table that I will use uh, in the next example. Well, in this demo, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to use uh, Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres for storing your vector data, Azure AI Vision for generating the embeddings, and Azure Prop Storage uh, for storing uh, the images uh, in your data set. Uh, I will use uh, the same data set, the paintings data set by the Visual Geometry Group at the University of Oxford, which contains more than uh, 8,000 images uh, of paintings. And I have already uploaded uh, the images in the Azure Block Storage. And for each image that's stored in Azure Block Storage, I call the vectorized image API of Azure AI Vision to compute the vector embedding of this image. And then I save uh, in my table in Azure Cosmos DB 
the file name of the image and, and its vector embedding in the table that I have created. Uh, I have already executed this flow uh, because it takes some time to complete. Uh, but as I said, you can find all the scripts in my GitHub repository if you want to explore this process uh, on your own. And uh, now we'll jump into the next flow, which is the vector similarity series flow. Uh, again, we'll use uh, Exhibitor Notebooks as uh, our application, and we will call the vectorized image or text API to compute the vector bending uh, of our query. And then uh, we'll use uh, the query vector to form a SQL queries to our Gazoo Cosmos DB for Postgres table to retrieve uh, the most similar images. Uh, let's go back to uh, Visual Studio. Uh, and this is the second notebook. Again, uh, we'll first import uh, the libraries uh, that are necessary to run uh, this app. And we load the environment variables for Azure Cosmos DB, Azure AI Vision, and Azure Block Storage. And then uh, I need to connect to my Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres cluster. Uh, to do this, I first uh, create a, a connection pool. And then I create a cursor object, which is used to execute a SQL queries. Uh, here you can see a demonstration of the, of the first uh, 10 rows of our table. You can see uh, the file name of the image, and next is the, the bending. Of course, it's not displayed here uh, because it's too big. Um, and now we will explore uh, the, the two scenarios, the image to image scenario or reverse image search scenario and the text to image scenario. Uh, before uh, going into image retrieval, we have to define a helper function uh, which will be used to display uh, the images that are retrieved for Azure Cosmos DB. And the display image this function takes as a parameter uh, a list uh, of the file names of the images, uh, downloads this image from our Azure Block Source container, and then displays these images in a plot. So let's start with the text uh, to image set scenario. Uh, again, I will use the same query uh, as in the first, uh, in the previous uh, demo. And let's say that we want to find paintings that show a table with flowers. And we first compute uh, the vector embedding of our text from using the text embedding function and the uh, vectorized text API. And then uh, we use uh, this, uh, this vector to form a SQL select statement uh, to our table. And uh, let's try to understand how this select statement works. Uh, this, uh, this query uh, uh, computes uh, the cosine distance. This is the operator uh, for cosine distance uh, between uh, the query vector and its vector embedding that's stored in our table order the results based on the computing uh, cosine distance, and then uh, select uh, the 12 uh, vectors with the highest cosine uh, similarity score. And uh, here you can see uh, the results that are retrieved from Azure, for Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, we, uh, using this select uh, SQL query, uh, we can find the file name and the corresponding vector and painting of the paintings that are most similar uh, to our text prompt. And using the display matrix function, uh, we can display uh, the paintings that are retrieved from Azure Cosmos DB and Azure Block Storage. 
uh, as you may notice, uh, using uh, this select statement, we are not able to find uh, the cosine similarity score uh, of, the, of the retrieved images. But if we modify a bit this select statement, we are able to uh, retrieve the cosine similarity score. So this select statement select the file name and the cosine similarity, which is equal to one minus the cosine distance between the query vector and the vector embedding of the image. And uh, now in the results, we can see uh, that we can we can find both the, the file name of the image and uh, the computed cosine similarity score. And again, we can use the display multiplet function to, uh, to display the results along with the similarity score, which is retrieved from Azure Cosmos DB. In this example, uh, we want uh, to filter uh, the results based on the cosine similarity uh, value. Uh, to do this, uh, we use a where clause and uh, we select only uh, the, the images and the vectors that have a cosine similarity score which is higher than a predefined threshold. And you can see that the result that I'm trained for Cosmos DB uh, are only six and not are only seven and not twelve as in the previous case. Uh, now we have the image to image search scenario. And in the first example, I will use as a reference image an image that's not uh, contained in our data set. Uh, this is a painting of apples, and I have computed uh, the vector bending of this image using the vectorized image API of Azure AI Vision. And I use a similar select statement uh, to, to find the paintings that are most similar to our reference painting. Uh, the difference is that here I use the vector embedding of our image. And you will see that we, uh, the Azure Cosmos DB uh, for PostgreSQL uh, retains uh, the paintings along with the similarity score. Do you think we have a second for a, a question? Yes. We got a few in. Um, and so one of them is, uh, I wonder about performance comparison of PG vector versus a native vector database. Like uh, we have <laughs> Adi, Chroma, LanceDB. Uh, OK, I have not used any of these databases, so I cannot actually answer this question, uh, but uh, I have to say that the performance of pitching vector can be improved if you use indexes and approach made nearest neighbor algorithms instead of the exact nearest neighbor algorithm that I'm using uh, in this demo. Okay, and then we got one more question. Uh, I wonder how the cosine similarity of image to image compares with the cosine similarity of text descriptions generated by the model. Uh, okay, I'm not sure that I understand this question, but I think that you, you wonder why the cosine similarity between uh, two images is higher than the cosine similarity between an image as a text. Mm, so, well Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that Sean can always reach out to you uh, after the fact. But I know you've got your information on LinkedIn and all that. So he can, if he wants to expand on his question, I'm sure that he can do that there. Um, you've got about, about 12 minutes left today. So I just want to make sure uh, you're all get, be able to finish up. Uh, the one thing that we'd love to see if you can provide is the... Uh, a, a repository link to the uh, the actual notebook 
if you don't mind. We'd love to see that. Uh, I know our viewers would like that. Um, we, we can get that via uh, the, the, the notes after the fact. So I'll, I'll just grab that for you. We'll put it in the notes. Anyway, like I said, we got about 12 minutes left. I'm going to give it back to you. All right. Hey, Patrick, thank you. Um, I just want to add something from, for the last question. Um, the cosine similarity between uh, two images is always higher uh, than the cosine similarity between a text and an image because uh, two images have always more, uh, more dimensions uh, in common. Uh, for example, when comparing two images, we do not only compare uh, if they con if both images contain hours or contain the day, but we compare uh, the colors between any two images, uh, the shapes that we see in these images. But when using text, uh, we cannot describe all these aspects of the image, so we get a lower similarity score. But this doesn't mean that the cosine similarity uh, of a text from it's not good. You just need to use different uh, different thresholds when uh, when doing uh, image to image search and when doing a uh, im uh, text to image search. Uh, okay, and um, before uh, before the end of the presentation, I have uh, my last example. Uh, in this case, uh, instead of using an external image as a reference. Uh, for se oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, for searching uh, for similar paintings, uh, I will use an image that is included in my data set, and I have selected uh, this painting, uh, which is displayed here. And now, when I when I write uh, the select statement, I don't have to directly specify uh, the vector embedding uh, of this painting. But instead, uh, I can use uh, this statement uh, to, to retrieve uh, the vector embedding of this painting from our table. And uh, use this vector embedding to, uh, to compute the cosine distance between uh, the reference vector and the vector embeddings of all the other images in my data set. And here we can see the results. Yeah, you can also modify a bit uh, the previous select statement uh, to retrieve the cosine similarity along with the file name and the vector appendix. Uh, so this was a quick introduction uh, to the PG vector uh, functionality. As I said, you can start exploring uh, more advanced features such as indexing and using approximate nearest neighbors uh, algorithms and ways you can optimize uh, the performance uh, of PIX vector uh, in Azure Cosmos DB uh, for Postgres. And you can find more information about this topic uh, in the in the in the GitHub repository of uh, PIX vector. Uh, I'm, I'm going back to the presentation uh, to show you uh, some uh, useful resources to learn more about uh, Azure AI Vision image retrieval uh, functionality and uh, how you can use the vector similarity search feature in Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres. Here's an article that I have written about uh, building a simple uh, vector similarity sets up with Azure AI Vision and Azure Cosmos DB for Postgres. And the last uh, link is the GitHub uh, repository that contains all the notebooks and scripts that I showed uh, in today's session. Great. And what we'll do is I will get all those links from you uh, before we, uh, we finish up, and I'll put those in the uh, the show notes so people if they need any of these resources they can go and grab them uh, so I guess uh, do we have any questions from the audience I'd love to give everybody a chance um, if not we can start wrapping up either way I think that you put together a really great presentation today um, I learned a lot I know our viewers learned a lot uh, 
And Askia, did you learn a lot today? I, I did. I absolutely did. Yeah. It's every every time it's uh <laughs> it's pretty interesting and uh knowledgeable experience. So I definitely appreciate the time um and the presentation. It's good job. Yeah. Good job. So great. Uh so I want to uh before we, we completely close out today, uh Askia, do you have uh any information about a survey or anything people can yeah, take? I sure do. Yeah, if you want to bring up uh, my slide, I will um We've got our survey link there. Um, so we'd love to hear your feedback, uh, which thought of the uh, presentation today. Uh, so go ahead and use that link and then uh, make sure to enter the event code, uh, which is 20517. Uh, and that will reference this session. And we will definitely take uh, any comments into consideration uh, for future, future uh, live streams. Spectacular. Well, everybody, I'm going to leave this up for you for just a second. Uh, Fatini, are, are there any presentations, anything that you've got coming up uh, that you'd like to share with our audience before we kind of close up? Uh, I have not planned anything for the next month. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm not planning anything for the next month myself, but that, that's a personal issue. Um, I just want everyone to remember that uh, next month, November, is Microsoft Ignite. If you have not registered, go to aka.ms slash msignite. You can go ahead, you can register for that. I'm gonna be there out in Seattle. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, to seeing a bunch of you. Uh, if you would like to uh, have a conversation, uh, I know that there's gonna be some great people um, who are, are gonna be meeting with you. They're gonna be experts. I'll be at one of the expert booths, so we'll be able to talk. But anyway, uh, Fatina, thank you so much for today. You did such a wonderful job and uh, I'd love to have you back on at some point. I want to see you continue to progress. I know that after you graduate, you've got so much more to do. And so thank you very much for being part of this today. Thank you very much. I have a very great time here. Great. Well, uh, unless anybody else has anything else, stop that, Alexa. Uh, Alexa decided to chime in. See, chiming in. Um, th th there's AI for us. Anyhow, uh, it, unless anybody has anything else to chime in with, I think we're going to roll out. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching today. And I know that uh, we've got a lot more great stuff to come. We've got sessions set up for November and December. Uh, we'll see you then. But until then, let's give everybody a big wave goodbye. So long, everyone. We will see you next time. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Bye.